I'm Mark Learmonth, Caledonia Mining CFO, and I'd like to run you through our corporate presentation. So here you see the disclaimer about forward-looking statements. Right, our um, strategy is, um, is based on trying to create genuine returns for shareholders, and there's four components to that. The first is the, the central shaft, which I'm going to talk about momentarily, which, which locks in near-term and for the mining space, relatively low-risk growth. Um, we're going to be increasing production substantially in 2022 as a result of the central shaft. And we've got a clear commitment, which we've, we've had for um, many years now, to, to return money to shareholders by way of a quarterly dividend. And on top of that, we're also now beginning to evaluate what we think are some quite attractive new opportunities in Zimbabwe. By way of an overview, Caledonia, we're an established profitable gold producer. We're based on the, um, on the blanket gold mine, which is in uh, Gwanda in the south of Zimbabwe. Um, late last year, November last year, we acquired the mining claims over an asset called Marley Green in the um, Zimbabwe Midlands, which contains an inferred resource of um, 900, 940,000 ounces at a grade of 1.88 grams a tonne. Uh, we're a Jersey, Jersey Channel Islands domicile company, which means our dividends don't attract um, withholding tax. And we're listed on NYSE, which is where the bulk of our, um, our trading liquidity is. Also on AIM and then recently on the Victoria Falls, the, the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange in, um, in Zimbabwe. At the end of December last year, we had uh, $16.3 million in cash. Uh, and our revenues last year for about $121 million. Uh, this last year's production was um, just over 67,000 ounces, which was slightly above the top end of our guidance range. And this year, 2022, we're guiding anything between 73 and 80,000 ounces, hopefully towards the top end of that range, at an all-in sustaining cost of between 880 and $970 an ounce. Moving on to talk about the dividend, we've been paying a dividend for very many years now. And um, early 2020, we increased it from just less than seven US cents a quarter, uh, pretty much by pretty much by a cent a quarter, apart from um, in March um, 2021, when we decided to, to pause and, uh, and just see what the outcome of the, um, of the coronavirus uh, epidemic was. And then in January this year, we, we held the dividend at um, 14 cents as we begin to pivot the company towards um, focusing more on um, exploration and development uh, rather than um, being a, a straightforward, uh, just, just a, money, a money box paying out, um, paying out cash. The dividend yield is about 3.7%. Uh, um, the dividend costs about six or $7 million a year, which in the context of our cash generation is relatively modest. So we do have plenty of capacity as we move forwards to invest money in new projects and also consider um, further modest increases to the, to the dividend. Looking at ESG, um, we take our ESG responsibilities very seriously. We published our first ESG report uh, last year, in July last year, and we're already well advanced on, um, on upgrading and refreshing that for 2022. In terms of corporate governance and ethics, our obligations put on us by the uh, SEC and our, via our NISA listing, and also from the London Stock Exchange via the AIM listing, um, require us to adhere to the highest levels of um, the corporate governance, which we believe we do. In terms of health and safety, we, um, we aim for a zero harm work environment. Um, in terms of our people, um, 100% of the workforce at the mine are um, native Zimbabweans and um, the, the workforce at Blanket Mine owns 10% of Blanket. Similarly, in terms of our community relations, the community also owns 10% of Blanket and, and we also have a, um, a CSR strategy focused on education, health, women and youth empowerment, agriculture, environmental and charity. So moving, moving on to talk about the central shaft. The central shaft is, is, we've been working on the central shaft since early 2015, and it's a six meter, six meter diameter shaft, four compartments, are going from surface in a single drop down to uh, 1,200 meters. Um, the, the shaft was commissioned in March 2021, and is now fully engaged um, hoisting development waste as we, as we now connect the shaft bottom to the, uh, to the mining areas. But even, even nevertheless, even, even though it's, um, currently only hoisting waste that relieves uh, pressure on the on the other operating shaft the number four shaft which can now focus exclusively on um, on hoisting ore 
And so that contributed to the um, increased production in 2021 of 67,000 ounces. And this year we're looking at about 80,000 ounces. Again, as we, as we, as we towards the end of the year begin to get all up um, central shaft, but also con- continuing, continuing to, to allow uh, number four shaft to focus on uh, all, all hoisting. Um, the number the, the the central shaft effectively is building a, a new mine mine underneath the old mining area. So what it does is it provides access to the to the existing reserves and resources below 750 meters for production purposes, and significantly also allows us the flexibility to engage in uh, in exploration activity at depth. And we're very confident that, uh, that the ore bodies that we're currently exploiting do extend at depth. And so we now have the capacity to, uh, to, re- to restart our deep level exploration program. And here you see a, a long section of the mining area from left to right, that's about three kilometers. And you can see we exploit a, a series of near vertical um, ore bodies. So you've got Lima on the left hand side, uh, Jethro on the right hand side. Uh, the, the dark line you can see at 22 level, 750 meters below surface. That was the bottom level of mining operations that we could access with the infrastructure that was in place when we bought this mine from Kinross in uh, 2006. And you can see the the a lot of a lot of the the um, ore bodies are, are now shaded in dark grey, and that's because they've now been fully exploited. And so you, you, don't, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to to appreciate that um, the future of this mine has to lie at depth. Hence, we put down the, the central shaft, that, that red, that big red, red thing in the middle. And then we're now busy doing the horizontal development on three levels in two directions, which gives us access to the existing resources at depth, but as, as I mentioned, also gives us the ability to, to conduct further um, exploration. And significant at the central shaft, because it is, as its name suggests, in the middle of the mining area, allows for much more efficient operation. Um, uh, workers and materials go, go down to the to the working areas in a single a single drop instead of having um, a more co- convoluted and, uh, and quite time consuming um, process of getting to the working areas. We're also fully engaged on a the first phase of a, a solar a solar project. The only significant operating difficulty that we face in Zimbabwe is, is poor power, and that that manifests itself in two ways. The first is just straightforward power outages. Uh, Zimbabwe, along with with several other countries in in the region, just simply doesn't generate enough power to uh, to meet its own needs, and so we do get uh, load shedding. And then, in addition, on top of that, we also have um, in, in instances of, uh, of of very significant um, uh, voltage spikes, which, if left unregulated, can cause immense damage to our own equipment. And if we see, in the absence of any sort of protective equipment, um, if if we experience several of those several of those spikes in quick succession, we have to go off the grid. To protect our equipment. Now, what we did towards the end of last year is we um, we put in place we, we acquired more um, protective equipment, and so that has allowed us to buffer from the the peaks and the and the troughs. So it does mean that we are currently using um, significantly less diesel uh, than we were previously, which is good. But fundamentally, you know, the, to address the power situation, we're going to have to go. Um, go off grid somewhat. So we've, we've embarked on the first phase of our solar project, which is costing about $14 million. Um, the project has been somewhat delayed due to supply issues relating to COVID, but we're now working um, full speed ahead on this project and it will be completed uh, at the end of June this year. So only a few more months to go. The project will provide about 27% of um, Blanket's average daily power usage um, and will contribute to about a, a 5% reduction in the uh, online cost per ounce. And already we're beginning to evaluate a, um, a second phase of the solar project, uh, probably including some sort of battery storage system to further increase our, um, our, uh, our, our ability to use solar. And it goes without saying that uh, we do have a, f- a full, full suite of standby diesel generators, which we can use to, um, to run the whole mining operation if, we're off, if, if we can't get um, power from the grid. In terms of new opportunities, as, as some of you may, may, may or may not be aware, Zimbabwe has, um, has a, a long history of, of uh, being a very, very significant gold producer. Um, it's produced over 45 million ounces of gold. And until, until 2000, Zimbabwe was producing more gold than countries which have now sort of burst onto the gold scene such as Mali, Tanzania, Burkina Faso, the DRC, and Guinea. So it is, it is a highly prospective gold region. And what, we do, what we've done here is we, we superimposed over a, a map of, 
of Zimbabwe, uh, which on which we've shown the uh, the greenstone deposits, a map of Burkina Faso to give some give you some sort of sense of uh, some idea as the as the potential scale of the gold opportunities in Zimbabwe. And what we did uh, late last year is we acquired um, the mining claims over a project called Mali Green in the Zimbabwe Midlands for about $4 million. That's already got a, um, an NI43-101 compliant um, resource base of 940,000 ounces at 1.88 grams a tonne. That's predominantly in the inferred category. And so the first thing we're doing right now is we are reevaluating the um, existing cores with a view to potentially uh, upgrading the, um, our confidence level from inferred to MNI. And that, well, that work should be done by the middle of middle of this year and then thereafter we, we expect to move on pretty quickly to a feasibility study and um, actually start constructing a mine. In addition to that, that we, we do believe there is potential for further further discoveries uh, at depth along strike and in a uh, in a new completely new zone uh, towards the north of the project. So the, the thick end of a million ounces we don't believe is, is by far the end of the story but we're just um, motivated to um, turn, the, turn that existing resource base into, into cash as quickly as possible. Zimbabwe has taken um, steps over the, over the course of the last five or six years to, to try to rehabilitate itself um, with, with investors. The, the most significant thing that was done by the, by the current president, um, Manangagwa, um, when he replaced um, the previous president, Mugabe, was to was to repeal the requirement for local ownership requirement. And so, um, where what, what the law was previously required that um, fifty one percent of any operation, but particularly mining operations, had to be owned by um, by local local people, and Blanket at that time was owned fifty one percent by um, by indigenous Zimbabweans. The first thing we did when when that legislation was repealed is we. We unwound a portion, a portion of those indigenization deals, and we we bought back a fifteen percent stake of a blanket. And so we increased our stake in blanket from forty nine percent to sixty four percent. So, as I mentioned earlier, the workers have got ten percent, the community has got ten percent. We're we're very happy with both those stakes, and the government's got sixteen percent as well. Um, the the other thing that's noteworthy about Zimbabwe is the, um, the tax. The tax regime is um, is quite attractive. It's one of the few countries in the world, I think the only other one is, is South Africa, where you get a 100% uh, write-off for, for capital expenditure in the year it's incurred, uh, which, is, which is very attractive. So in terms of our outlook, um, our, target for product, our target for this year, 2022, is to um, increase production from 67,000 ounces last year to about 80,000 ounces this year. Um, we have a track record of returning money to shareholders. As we move forwards with an existing new project and hopefully further, further projects that we, we might get our hands on in due course, the, 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 the flow of cash coming out of Blanket um, is likely to be shared between some going into new projects and some going to, uh, to shareholders, and that's going to be a balancing act. And we do continue to evaluate new investment opportunities over and above the Marley Green asset that we've already acquired. And the objective is to transform this business from being a, a single asset Zimbabwe gold producer to being a... Um, a multi-asset mid-tier gold producer focused on Zimbabwe. And here you see our contacts in North America, um, contact through, uh, through three PPB, Patrick Chidley and Paul Durham. In, in Europe, there's Jochen Steiger based in uh, Switzerland. And in Zimbabwe, we have uh, Deborah uh, in Harare. Thank you very much.